Greetings, peeps of the interwebs. It's Jake here. Been a hot minute since I last uploaded anything, which seems to be a recurring trend here. Um, but, you know, consistency. Who needs it? It's overrated. That's not the point of this video. Point is, so, I'm going to do a bit of a tease for my forthcoming novel, Priestess and the Paladin. As recently, R. R. Mendoza, the incredible artist who has done all the artwork for me, um, which I've displayed here many times, um, re but basically he recently completed um, two sketches and then a full, you know, fully paint, uh, yeah, digitally painted um, picture. And so, in fact, this video would be a good way to do two things: one, to just further showcase his incredible artwork. Uh, and also, as I said, as a teaser for my forthcoming novel. Um, so, the first picture that you're seeing right now is a, I believe, from chapter, it's either five or six, I want to say six, pretty sure it's six, Trouble on the Road. Um, and we see our main character, Zofia, uh, the priestess, um, combating a Gagosian soldier, which they are essentially these humanoid reptile people. Um, and in the background, um, hopefully you can see this in the, the picture, um, you can see a silhouette of Vraxel uh, combating two other soldiers, uh, taking them all at once because he's a badass. That's kind of what he does. So I really like this picture. Um, and this is actually, again, this it's pretty early on in the book. Actually, all, all, all three of these pictures are. Um, but uh, I really like this because one, it's, you know, Fully covered, uh, covered, colored, uh, fully co uh, colored. Um, and I just, uh, you know, what, what's what's not to like here? Um, like the colors, uh, I really like the contrast of the kind of um, purple, almost dusk um, setting with like the creepy looking trees, and again the silhouettes of like the other characters fighting in the background. I think is great. Um, and so we're taking on the uh, Gikosian spear, uh, Spearman. Um, also really like the design of the Spearman as well, because he looks, you know, he's the same race as uh, Varaxel, one of the other main characters, the Paladin. Um, but uh, he looks different enough to where, hopefully, uh, people don't mistake him when they see this picture, because, you know, uh, they're, you know, Varaxel has, you know, fiery red scales, um, hence the last name, Varaxel Firescale. Um, and the, this Gigosian Spearman has green scales, um, which there's actually a bit of a hierarchy with the different scales, um, or scale colors with the Gigosian people, but that's a, that's a topic for another video. Um, but yeah, really like this picture, um, so it kind of just shows the, well, the trouble on the road, as the, the title of that chapter suggests, uh, where they get into a bit of a scuffle um, with a scouting party, um, because the Gagosians and the other are one of the native races to the continent, um, or the kind of more centralized continent, um, that the story takes place, and along with the Gurash, who are kind of these tall, imposing, uh, gray-skinned humanoid creatures, who are basically at war with, like, the other races, the humans, elves, dwarves, um, all that jazz, um, and so yeah. They get in a bit of a scuffle, and uh, things get heated, and uh, a little, a little bit of a fight breaks out. So, so yeah. The second picture that you're seeing here is the, I believe, the following chapter, uh, the Hunters, um, where basically after Zobi and Varaxel get into that bit of a scuffle, um, they are being pursued by the, uh, you know, army, um, because. You know, they, they roughed up their dudes, so they're, they're after them. Um, and the Gagosians ride, uh, ride these mounts called Vlocinicus, or Velox for short, Velox. Um, not the Velox, who are people of uh, Eastern Europe, uh, <laughs> digressing. Um, and so the Velox are essentially raptors um, that, you know, are big enough to be used as mounts. So that was really cool that the, you know, in, in my world, the Gagosians are kind of these ancient, very mysterious, you know, humanoid reptile people, and I just thought it was really cool, or it would be really cool, that instead of riding horses and kind of traditional mounts uh, used throughout our world and history, um, that they would use more 
you know, like reptilian creatures or more or less dinosaurs, because I just thought that was really cool and also wanted to really make them feel, you know, completely different from the other races and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, uh, this this is again from the chapter um, The Hunters, if I recall, and so basically Zobi and Braxel are trying to flee from their um, these mounted soldiers, and so they flee into the Zillandrovo forest, which is like this super ancient, like almost primordial forest um, that's, you know, got like tons of rumors and stories about it being like so old and dangerous and all that stuff. But they're kind of left with like very few options, so they kind of make make for the uh, Zolodrovo forest in order to escape. Um, Braxel does a kind of a, a last man stand against the pursuers, that way Zoe can escape. And that's what you're seeing in this picture right here is him about to confront the uh, mounted Gagosian soldiers, um, which, again, in a way I actually think this sketch works better, uh, not being fully colored, because I feel like it kind of adds to the kind of creepy ambiance of the forest, and also just really like the design of the, the trees and the way he designed the Velox, which again, they're more or less raptors, but I still like the way that he designed them along with the melting Gagosians, um, so like, super cool. Love the detail that he put into this, uh, and, and with all the artwork for that matter. Um, but yeah, super, super pleased. And lastly, the picture you're seeing now is... Uh, I think this is a... Ch yeah, I think this is the chapter after um, the Hunters... I think it's just called the Zillandrovo Forest, uh, where basically after um, Zobie and Varaxel escape the um, Gagosian soldiers, they f meet uh, Narn Orhart and Faradel Ladri, um, who are two witch hunters, which, to know a little bit more about that, just watch the profile videos that I did on Narn and uh, Faradel, which I'll link in the description below. Um, but also you can just kind of, you know, scroll through channel videos. But anyways, uh, so again, this is their time in the Zillandrova Forest. And, you know, not not long after meeting their, their new pals, uh, the witch hunters, Narn and Faradel, uh, they're in pursuit of these creatures called the Uzabak, or wretches in the common tongue. Um, which you can see, like, chasing after Narn uh, as he's desperately trying to flee, because him being a dwarf, he's shorter in stature, therefore has a doesn't have as long of a stride as Zovia for Axel or Faradale. so typically any time they're running from anything, he's kind of falling behind, um, just because, you know, he just physically cannot keep pace with them. Um, so they want to try and keep things real, that are as realistic as possible, even though it's a fantasy world and all that stuff. But anywho, so in this picture you can see the wretches uh, just desperately trying to tear Narn apart, which the wretches uh, are kind of a creature that I came up with myself, because a lot of them in my world are very much based in uh, you know, mythology, folklore. Um, but there's some that I wanted to kind of craft for myself. Um, so basically I kind of just envisioned them being these three-eyed, uh, about like three feet tall, three-eyed, like just terrible, vicious creatures with razor-sharp teeth and claws, um, to where even if you're in like full plate mail, they'll just, like, rip you open like a can opener to rip into your flesh and devour you cold. Um, and they predominantly live in trees, uh, so they kind of, like, swing from, you know, treetop and limbs and vines and all that stuff and hunt as a pack, uh, and they're very intelligent, uh, which is actually one thing that I really like is the way he kind of made these look like baboons. Um, so again, you know, Monkeys, baboons, primates, all that stuff are highly intelligent. Um, and so this is a little kind of like these kind of nightmarish three-eyed baboons from hell, um, which I really dig. So, so yeah, that's uh, you can see them just trying to tear at him, and he's just desperately cutting through them, trying to escape with his life. Um, so again, really like this picture, because it just shows the uh, ferocity of these creatures. Um, I also, again, wanted to kind of show how dangerous the forest is to where, 
almost every corner you could be potentially walking to your death. Um, if there's, you know, not the Ubazank or the wretches, there's tons of other dangerous creatures and monsters that live within the forest. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of a tease, um, and I guess a little bit of insight uh, into the book and kind of, um, yeah, lost my train of thought. But yeah, <laughs> that stuff. Um, but super, super impressed and very much pleased uh, with these sketches that he did. Because um, one, even though I kind of like envisioned how some of this looked in my head as I was writing it out, it's a whole other thing to see this come to life, you know, through pen and pen and paper, even if it's digital. Um, so now I actually have a better visual representation of like, again, what the wretches look like, because uh, I had an idea of what they looked like in my head, but then to see what he came up with uh, based on my description in the book, I thought was pretty much spot on. So, which further testament to his abilities to where, uh, you know, as I mentioned in the character profiles, uh, I gave him like a concept art uh, and like very little description on like kind of how I saw the characters and more or less let him do his own thing and he did a phenomenal job with designing the characters the cover for the book and of course as you can see in these sketches so definitely go check out his website which again will be linked in the description below and um, hopefully I've piqued you all's interest a little bit more on the book which I guess a little, you know, a little bit of an update while I'm at it um, so I've done my own um, edits of the first book, but I'm still waiting on a friend of mine to do his, um, and he actually has a journalism degree, so far more suited to do editorial things than someone like me who does not have a degree in, you know, English or language or anything like that. Um, so I'm definitely going to trust his judgment on, you know, grammar punctuation, dialogue, all that stuff, uh, far more than I would my own. So in the meantime, I've also been editing the second book, because as the last video uh, mentioned, the rough draft of book two is done. And so, you know, kind of been going back and forth with like a little bit of edits, just because I feel like I, in general, have gotten a little bit better um, as a writer and have a better eye. Not to say I'm good by any means, but I at least feel like I have a slightly better eye for like how to touch up dialogue or add a bit more description to kind of paint a better picture, all that stuff. So that's one of the things I've been working on in the meantime. I've also recently redesigned my map of the, not the, the entire continent, but at least the kind of central, um, kind of cent uh, central area uh, where most of the stories that I have in mind take place just to kind of better match the geopolitics of the world. Even though, admittedly, the redesigns won't factor in a whole lot with the Priestess and the Paladin book series. Uh, I, this is just something for later on down the road, and also, in general, I kind of just like tinkering and, you know, editing my maps, and so eventually I was like, you know, I need to do a almost a complete rehaul anyways. Um, so that was another little thing that I've been working on. And started book three... I am three, yeah, three chapters, uh, almost four chapters into book three, because, you know, I feel like writing is the only thing that I know how to do now, after investing so much time into it, um, and figure why not, uh, while I'm waiting on the uh, full edits of book one to be done, um, I, I kind of just feel like I need to be productive, so... Um, kind of one of the reasons why I haven't been super active on the channel, and also because, you know, <laughs> um, lack of motivation, I guess. Um, and I know I say this every time, that, like, I'm gonna get in the habit of uploading more often, um, which I do, I do want to do at some point. Whether that happens now, I don't know, but eventually. Um, and also, uh, hopefully, like, again, once the first book gets a little bit closer to the publishing process, uh, that's when I'll kind of start uploading more videos regarding the, the book and things regarding the book, like back to the, you know, 
eventually I would like to do more of the world lore series that I started um, a while back. Just kind of detailing some of the different like people, races, cultures, all that jazz in the fantasy world that I've created. And so that's stuff to look forward to at some point. Um, and eventually I do also want to start a website and probably like a Facebook page or some kind of social media page just for the book, any kind of uh, information or or maybe just not even bother with like a Facebook and Twitter and just create a website for all, um, you know, and have that as like an aggregate for all news and information regarding um, the Priest and the Pound of Book series or any other books that I plan on writing or really in general other things that I'm working on um, project wise. So I've considered doing like, uh, you know, travel blogs and blogs in general, maybe start up a podcast again, because it's nothing I, I, I do want to do eventually. Um, but that's, that's stuff all for later on down the road. But anywho, hopefully you all have enjoyed this video that I feel like I rambled on a little too much towards the end. But oh well. Nonetheless, wrapping up here. Yeah, hope you enjoyed. Um, do the usual youtube -y stuff with, you know, like, comment, Subscribe, share to your friends, family, uh, neighbors, neighbor's dog. Um, I'm also on Twitter, at Irishman Jake. You can tweet at me. I'm not really on there very much, but if you tweet at me, I will actually get on there and reply back, uh, or, or follow you, or whatever. Um, but yeah, so, that wraps up this video, and uh, until next, everyone, cheers!